Hello everybody and welcome to episode 70 of the Chesterfield of Dreams. Today I'm not going to uh, take too long out of your day, but I'd just like to uh, take a moment to review the season gone by, the most significant yet of this wonderful series. And as you saw, we are going to be in the Champions League next season, but unfortunately a loss to Manchester City on the final day means that uh, they get the automatic right to play in that tournament, whereas we have to go through the playoff and and uh, if you want to check that out, I'll uh, show you now. Um, you see, Liverpool finished fourth last season, and they had to go through the playoff. And uh, Genoa are the champions again. They've denied Manchester United the treble, and uh, that was a real heartbreaker, particularly since it was an extra time. But if we look at the uh, best-placed playoff, Liverpool were beaten by an underdog Turkish side called Balik, uh, Balikek Sirispor. And uh, they are, they're very much on the rise in this series. And they finished fourth in the uh, Sportoto Super League. Where I once managed in FM14 with uh, Bursa Spore. You can see them down there. So uh, Balik guess Sierra Spore uh, beat Liverpool to get into the uh, group stages. And that was would have to go down as a massive shock. But uh, bear in mind that our um, rankings will almost certainly be uh, next to nothing. So we'll be unseeded in the uh, playoffs and in fair, fairness to uh, Balik Sirispor they uh, drew a game um, probably against Sh Shakhtar so uh, it's going to be really difficult for us to get into the uh, group stages but you have to believe uh, it's somewhat possible since we are in one of the uh, top leagues in the world but um, I hope you guys won't be too sad if I fail to make the Champions League and instead have to settle for the Europa League, which was actually won by Bayern Munich. You, you'd think they'd be consistent challengers, but it's a lot of big clubs have won the Europa in recent years, including Monaco and uh, Inter Milan. So um, that, that'll be a great challenge as well. Uh, however, let's just uh, review the... Um, few things that uh, I probably didn't uh, mention in the last episode. Uh, the first thing you probably want to know is our uh, average attendance by capacity and that was a splendid 99.68% the best in the league and we had the uh, 17th best attendance uh, better than Queen's Park Rangers, Huddersfield and Watford. So uh, it's goes to show Chesterfield are on the rise even though our ground is uh, uh, one of the smallest we are doing a splendid job uh, outdoing some of those uh, clubs in terms of uh, uh, attendance and uh, this is the most important stat you'd like to know uh, Manchester City who beat us on the final day spent 332 million euros per annum on salary whereas Little Old Chesterfield so far only spent 27.83 million so what an achievement it is to beat all these uh, clubs below us and get Champions League football like that sum is down, is guaranteed to rise as the years go by as players demand rises and I bring in new new talents and that sort of thing but that is just a wonderful achievement uh, to get uh, into the Champions League with such a low budget and uh, speaking of the budget it's now at a record high 65.5 million euros and I've got to spend that wisely uh, heading into next season because uh, we're still without those facilities uh, as I mentioned um, you can see it's going to take another few months it'll be a nice uh, present uh, to wake up to on the 10th of October so we're uh, able to hire a few more staff and I made a, a minor adjustment to my team uh, I've promoted uh, where is he um, Scott Gooding yes my favorite coach I, I have ever had in the series he's now a full-time coach uh, and the under 21s manager job has also been uh, the changing of the guard with Neil Coverley in uh, that role now so I hopefully have a few under 21 coaches in position as well so that's uh, great to see now uh, let's mention the uh, squad uh, while our stats are still uh, intact so uh, they're overall for the season uh, most appearances Yara Mesa unsurprisingly Anthony Syra tied but he only made the starts at 26 Brian Boring 24 starts Tomas Forza 24 starts uh, Shanahan Darfry Sean Kavanagh Jakob Rinna Kinsla Lenahan Muller Bimbo Letta Gulden Grauschoff uh, Ahmed Cook Zand Pino Wagstaff Stephenson Donovan Daniels Loftus-Cheek Michael Henning and Tom Bertram so um, in fairness I have sold on um Kenji Gore and Kostas Trantafagopoulos, who I'll talk about in a minute. Um, 
So there are my appearance ranks. The uh, Yair Mesa actually had his worst season because of that uh, injury and uh, blip at the end of his campaign. But hopefully he's not too upset and he can carry on banging in the goals next season. Uh, he went a long time without scoring, which is a shame. But Tomas Forza, credit to him. He uh, won an award for his uh, efforts and he... Um, got as many goals as Yara Mesa did for his very best season and I was super proud of him pardon the uh, noise in the background I uh, can't help it so Tomas Forza has won the uh, Young Player of the Year just like Mesa did last year so not bad for a club that uh, doesn't raise its own youth at the minute so uh, I'm able to find some of the best young talent from other clubs and that is a great asset to uh, the scouts and uh, Machanid uh, Ahmed has been the third best goal scorer at nine. Kinsella back to his scintillating best after uh, a poor season last year to un until the very end. But he was brilliant in the first Premier League season and he's even better this time around. So I'm absolutely thrilled with Kinsella. Michael Henning, much better from him as well. He scored four goals as opposed to one. So he's on the way up and hopefully he, with more games to play he'll be fit and raring to go again. Henrik Goulden scored two of his three goals against Arsenal, one of the the third goals against Liverpool, so uh, that's pretty good. Tom Bertram uh, scored two of his goals in one game as well, um, and it was great to have him back from that long-term injury. Uh, Paul Groshoff and Andrew Syra, my German centre-backs, have two goals each. Then Donovan Daniels, Sam Zand, Bimboletta, Brian Boring, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, that brilliant goal against West Brom, and Darth Roy also got a goal. To remember the season, Ahmed is the most selfless player according to the assist charts. Tomas Forza is 6, Kinsella 5, Gooden, Boring and Cook all with 5. Jan Messa and Henning have 4, Dolph Roy amazing has 4 as well. And then uh, down to the very bottom you can see Pino is the last player with an assist. Player of the match awards, uh, Messa 6, Tomas Forza 5, Syra 3 and Dolph Roy with 2. And everyone down to Shanahan has 1. And average rating, Forza 7.32. Uh, after 24 uh, starts, Dal Fry second, Brian Boring with 7.10, Anthony Cyrus same score, Sean Cavanaugh 7.06, he is getting on now, but I fancy him to carry on for at least two more years. Kinsla, Jan Mesa, Brian Lenehan, uh, Ahmed and Tom Bertram all got seven or more. And then the weakest players this season were Ruben Loftus Cheek, David Shanahan, Donovan Daniel, Sam Zand and Ray Pino. A bit harsh, but I think everybody played their part in this splendid season and they deserve uh, immense credit for that. And uh, in terms of the club, um, the general, uh, I'm still a favoured uh, member of staff, uh, Jan Mesa similarly. Um, Lee Griffiths is an icon. Um, he's moved on and he's doing quite well for Cowden Beath, which is uh, cool to see. Um, in terms of what I'd like to do with the club next, uh, I'd, I probably should bring in new defenders and midfielders since I did let go of Kenji Gore and, Co and Costas Trantafiopoulos, which you'll uh, see all the way down here. You will start with Gore. He was a wonderful servant to the club uh, from the championship days and he was sold to Brighton very early in his career after a wonderful second season and then I bought him straight back for a little bit of a uh, little bit of a law well I think we made a profit on him buying him back and he was dependable for the next five seasons until I just felt it was time for him to go and uh, Swindon is his brand new uh, place of work and then Trantafiopoulos he was a critical buy in my first Premier League season for under a million euro and uh, even though he wasn't spectacular he got the job done, kept us in the Premier League and helped uh, unearth new defensive talents and now he's going to play in the Championship with Northam Northampton Town. So uh, thank you very much to those two players for their uh, loyalty and uh, that means the squad registration, uh, you know, we have to wait for the next uh, date to uh, refresh. But uh, Brian Boring and Stanislas Bemboleta are under the age of 21 uh, as per this season so uh, I have to probably register them next season and I've got Marcel Phillips to worry about as well so I'm not too sure how many transfers I can make if I want to keep those players but um, I have to think very hard about what to do uh, maybe buy some more under 21s and uh, get them to play Champions League and that sort of thing so uh, that's one way around it but apart from that I think every other player is going to stay uh, Ben Wagstaff, I've re 
uh, claimed him on loan for another season. So uh, hopefully we can grab him on a free transfer if Arsenal uh, don't wake up and smell the coffee with him. So that's pretty much the majority of things I need to say. Um, the competitions, uh, just a review of that. Um, the Capital One Cup ended early by uh, Northampton Town and Manchester United won that. And the FA Cup, we were beaten by West Brom and that tournament was also won by Manchester United so they could have won a quadruple uh, if it wasn't for Chiqui Genoa who uh, now have Jose Mourinho in charge of them and uh, in place of the uh, Portuguese is Dagoberto. He's a very young manager by... Uh, you know most standards and he previously took charge of CSK Moscow Brazil Sao Paulo um, and that sort of thing so he has uh, credentials but whether or not he can help Chelsea win the Premier League after quite a few years without it uh, that remains to be seen but um, Chesterfield have done a remarkable job this season we've ousted the likes of Liverpool mm -hmm. Sunderland and Newcastle from European Champions League football Arsenal way down lucky not to be relegated and so on and so forth. Uh, coming up for next season will be Sheffield United, Hull City and Brighton and Hove Albion. So that will be uh, fascinating to say the least. Uh, Millwall, Derby and Aston Villa missed out on the uh, elite level. And it was uh, goodbye to Peterborough, Bournemouth and Burnley from uh, the second tier. And then my old uh, stomping grounds of League One sees Wickham Wanderers, Barnsley and Swindon earn a, a promotion uh, to the next tier and then down we'll go Newport County Notts County, Plymouth and Blackpool and then the final top tier we've got League 2 Turkey United have won the league they're quite dominant fashion to say the least Bristol City my old rivals in second, Lincoln have uh, come third and then promoted in the playoffs where Grimsby, Bolton have uh, repaired their uh, broken club it seems but they couldn't get promoted and uh, down and out of the Football League will be Oxford City and Doncaster. And then in the Van Rama Conference, we'll just check who's going up. We've got Oxford and Matlock, my, uh, my feeder club. That's fantastic news, so delighted for them. And uh, that'll conclude the episode, guys. If there's anything I missed, uh, I'll be sure to catch up on it. But uh, we'll be returning in time for our playoff in the Champions League. Whoever that will be against, we're going to wait and see. But uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.